Hey, what's up? It's Seth with InDemand Career. I show people how to get jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And that includes my very special guest today, Boris, who is making $70,000 a year working for one of the largest companies on the planet um, from his home in the Midwest. Uh, so, and uh, Boris has had a very unusual journey to his current uh, situation and this great job. So look forward to sharing his story with you. Boris, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, so why don't you tell people about your current job and what you're doing, who you're working for? So I currently work for Procter & Gamble. Um, I'm a e-retailer paid search campaign manager. So I actually manage uh, the category baby care, which includes uh, Pampers, All Goods and Loves. And I actually manage about... Uh, six to seven different ad platforms totaling over, you know, mul multiple millions in uh, ad revenue, uh, including uh, Target, Walmart, and uh, Kroger. That's fantastic, man. And um, <laughs> that's a lot of responsibility, especially considering your background and, you know, your journey to this job. So I think it'll be cool to share this uh, with people. Um, so, and I mean, before we do that, let's, I mean, I'm really just curious more about this job. Like, how is it for you handling that much ad spend and how, you know, how has the job been for you? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, it's actually been a bit overwhelming when I first started, but I think uh, with time and uh, having a good mentor, I'm finally getting the hang of it. Um, I will say with a lot, a lot of ad spend, ad spend, you do have to do a lot of uh, budget rebalancing and, you know, making sure that your ads run throughout the full, you know, daily cycle without going dark early. So um, it's definitely not the easiest job uh, managing these platforms, but um, it's definitely very rewarding when you see results. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't be easy. I mean, you're managing some of the largest brands. I mean, I didn't even realize like, you, you know, Procter & Gamble is a huge company, but like, you know, like Loves and <laughs> those are household names. So that's that's very exciting. Uh, and I'm sure it's only going to continue to amp up as the holidays, uh, you know, approach. Um, so let's give people a little insight into your journey, which um, took it's kind of a cool story. It's, it sounds like you 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 had a bit of a roundabout way into this position. So let's go back to uh, when did you first find out about digital marketing and the course? So I first think I found out about it uh, stumbling on Matt Tran's channel. Uh, I'm not sure how I found out about him, but uh, at the time it was uh, May of 2017 and I was just working uh, at, at the U.S. Attorney's Office over in Columbus, Ohio as a legal clerk. I was just entering like 50 to like 60 criminal cases into the system. And it was just a really mundane job. And I, I, I felt like I just needed to change. So uh, at the time, I actually quit that job and uh, signed up for Matt's course. And I, I think I went through in, in about a month, got all my certifications and uh, start, started applying right away. You mean, um, my, you mean my course? Or, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's all right yeah we, we promoted it together so that was in 2017 and uh and what was your background you did you like major in engineering or you seem like somebody who would have majored in engineering or did you go to college i, I forget uh i actually uh have a four-year bachelor's at ohio state in uh, accounting but yeah oh accounting okay so you, but you, you majored in accounting and, but you didn't work in accounting. Why didn't you go to work in accounting? Well, um, I think I, I didn't really like, I guess when I got into the field, a lot of people had like co-ops and internships. And uh, I felt like I was like late to the game because I just uh, got my degree and I didn't have any connections. So I, it was just a really hard time getting into that field. And um also, I, I didn't really enjoy accounting. Uh, going through those classes, it just felt really boring to me. So, yeah, that's great. I mean, not great, but it's great you saw that. I mean, it's unfortunate, like so many people, you you know, got this major that wasn't most people. That's what happens with most people, by the way. They major in a topic, and then by the end, they're like, "Wait a minute, I don't like this." Um, so, 
Uh, then after you took the course, tell us about, you know, the first job you got. Yeah, so my first job, I got hired uh, January 29 or 2018. Uh, it was a company called Castle & Cook Mortgage. Uh, they're a mortgage lender based in uh, Draper, Utah. And I was actually uh, more of a generalist. So like, I think my job was actually to teach about 25 loan officers, like basically social media and like how to manage uh, this CRM platform that had like, you know, landing pages, uh, email marketing, um, it, it basically the whole, the whole nine. Um, so yeah, I was more of a generalist, uh, rather than like a specialist. Yeah. And you, this is something we discussed. So you, you were thrilled to get the job. And I remember you sent me that email, which was, I was excited for you. Um, but this is one of the distinctions I make with my, whether you're a current student or you, you haven't taken the course is that you, if you want to have quick growth in the field, you really need to be focused. Like you said, like I, you put it well, like you need to be a specialist, not a generalist. Um, and it's okay to have a job where you're doing kind of multiple things, but you need to be working on SEO or paid advertising. Um, whether it's paid Facebook and Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, Google ads, of course, the main thing, or search engine optimization, you know, altering web, you know, making changes to websites or link building to get um, websites higher in the search results. But it sounds like what you were doing, and it's totally, this happens sometimes, you don't, you don't know the difference. And I've, I've made a much bigger distinction about this within the course. These social media, if you're just kind of doing Facebook posts without the paid aspect, it's not, it's not gonna have as much uh, value on your resume. Um, but you, it was a good experience. And then um, how long did you stay at that job? Yeah, so I think I was there until about the middle of uh, 2019. So about, about a year and a half to two years. And then this is very unique guys. Um, tell, tell people what you did next. What was your next job after that? And what, how did you get that job? Yeah, so at the time I was actually uh, still working at this job, but um, I got really interested in uh, software development, which is completely different. Um, so I actually signed up for a local uh, coding boot camp here in Cincinnati, and it was actually a part-time program. So I was going to my nine to five job while uh, going to this boot camp from like six to nine thirty, about three times a week. Um, so eventually, uh, that transitioned me into my next job uh, as a junior develop dev developer. Um, about six months later. So you were you were coding, you jumped from digital marketing over to coding. Uh, yeah. And tell me more, like I let, you know, I've heard, I interviewed some other people you mentioned who maybe they weren't actually writing code or they didn't, they didn't um, have the enjoyment of it that you seem to. And I really like the fact that you're pursuing things that you enjoy and interest you, but tell us, you know, what it is you like about coding or why you made the tr transition at that time. Yeah, so I think um, I think it comes from like building WordPress websites. And I think I was messing around with this thing called Divi themes. And there was like parts of the theme builder that I, I couldn't like figure out. And you had to like know JavaScript. So that actually led me to like take a JavaScript course. And then I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. It's like, wow, I can like change things on the website, like a button. Uh, which connects to a certain page. I'm like, it's like, what happened with, if I took a coding bootcamp? So that made me uh, learn more about uh, like basically the full stack, which is like, you know, the front end and the back end. And uh, yeah, long story short, I, I guess what I really enjoy about coding is uh, having to solve like a specific problem that's really comp complex and breaking it down into like, you know, like five easy steps. It's, it's I, I guess it's kind of like uh, cooking a recipe. Yeah, and I'm glad this is such a cool, unique story because, you know, I people ask me a lot of the time, you know, is digital marketing the same as coding? And it absolutely is not. 
They're completely different. Um, they're just they're just both tech fields. And I always tell people, you know, coding is a little more. It's a little for me even. It's a little too sophisticated. I would really have to dedicate myself, and it's a little too much of the left brain analytical. Um, it's funny you have an accounting background because I can see if you if you if you did well in school as an accountant, you know, it's that same part of the brain where you're analyzing and, you know, working with, you know, concept, but for most people and a lot of the people have taken my course, I know we're not really wired for that. So it's cool that you could do that, but it's definitely a different skill set. Um, and I think it's awesome that you have two really powerful skill sets um, that you can utilize, which leads us to the next part of your story. So you, what happened with this job? Oh, and, and how much were you making at the coding job and, and then what happened with it? Yeah, so I was making roughly uh, 60K. Uh, and basically what happened with this job, so I was working there about, about a year. And then uh, in March of 2020, uh, you know, one day I just got the message that they were going to let go of a lot of their uh, entry level developers. Uh, so, yeah. That included me along with uh, so other other coding uh, boot campers from the same boot camp. They were actually working at the same company. So I think me and like three other people got let go at the same time. Right at when the pandemic hit in March. And so right. then and so then tell us. So now this is interesting. Now you're you know, you you don't have a job. You have two different skill sets. And so what happened next and how did it lead to your current position? Yeah, so I guess like everyone that's like in the same boat, you know, when you first lose a job, it's it's definitely very taxing on your mental health. So um, I, I I guess I didn't immediately like go to apply for jobs, but um, but I think like a couple months later, I, I felt like I, I should probably get back on the market. So what I did was um, I was like, I have two good skills, digital marketing and software development. So why don't I make like two different versions uh, of my resume and uh, basically uh, send them out to the Vegas job websites. Uh, so I did that and I actually was applying like a ton. Like, I think I was applying like 20 to 35, like, uh, you know, jobs like a day. I was just trying to find every job out there for the keywords. And uh, while I did get some like callbacks, like it was basically completely dead like I, I wasn't getting any anything back and then <laughs> that's good really and then this is something I talk about in the course guys also I said and this is a tough thing especially if you have lost a job is that you shouldn't actually do what Bert just said you shouldn't bulk apply like that um, what you should do and what I tell my students to do is you really need to like your mental state actually affects the results you get when you're searching for a job. It's kind of a weird secret that people don't talk about. So if you're out there and you're like, I need a job, I need a job, I need a job. And you're just like flying, you know, throwing out your resumes. First of all, you're not putting care into each resume. It's just, it's, it's, it's almost like if you were out at a bar and you're talking, you're trying to talk to everybody, you know, rather than focusing on one person. Um, and it's just kind of a weird phenomenon, but what's the, the, it has a happy ending because tell people what eventually happened. Like, you know, how did this amazing opportunity with Procter and Gamble actually show up? Like, how did that happen? Well, I, I think uh, one of the things I, I made sure to do after every job is uh, get asked for a recommendation from coworkers and uh, managers and bosses. So I think, uh, how I actually stumbled upon this job was, I think one day uh, on LinkedIn, I just received like a direct message from a recruiter. And he was like, hey, uh, uh, Procter & Gamble is actually hiring for this paid search campaign manager. You know, you seem to be the perfect fit. Uh, do you have time for a phone interview? So obviously I, I said yes. And I think this was a, funny because I was actually... The next day I was actually uh, flying up to San Diego for like a one week trip. So I actually had to schedule my interview act after my vacation. So after my vacation, 
I interviewed like the day right after. So I, I wasn't even in the right state. Um, I actually didn't think I did the best, but um, you know, the day after the interview, the recruiter was like, Hey, it's like, Oh, you're, you seem like you're feeling a little bit down. Uh, uh, what's wrong. He was like joking with me. It's like, what if I told you that they would offer you a job? And I was like, no, you're, you're joking me. So I was like, I was overjoyed and I was like, this can't be happening with Procter and Gamble. And now they're even paying me higher than what I was making at my previous job. I'm like, this is, this is just unreal. So um, I guess uh, sometimes when you do just maybe take a vacation to relax, like, you know, good, you see good things happen. Well said, man. I tell this to my students. It's one of the more subtle aspects of life that I don't really, it's really hard to pin down and I'm so happy for you. It's like, I'm so happy you had that vacation, man, because I'm telling you the more stressed out and like needy you are in a job interview or when you're applying the, 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 it doesn't work out well. That's the irony. You know, there's this great movie called office space. <laughs> like have you seen office space? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a classic with uh, with Jennifer Aniston is from Mike Judge. And it's like, remember the guy who works at the office and he he goes to the hypnotist and then the hypnotist like dies while he's hypnotizing him. But then the guy just doesn't care. He's just like super relaxed and doesn't give a shit. And like he gets high, he gets a raise at work and everything. And that's like funny, but it's true. So I'm not saying you walk into the interview stoned and like, you know, I don't give a, sh you know, give a shit, <laughs> but if you've come, you know, the f fact that you spent a week in San Diego relaxing, enjoying yourself, probably in this, you know, near the beach, whatever, with friends, whatever you were doing, and you said you weren't in the right space, I'm glad you said that because that's what people think, you know, especially from all the training from school and our parents, you have this idea that you're supposed to be like so like intensely like trying to please and like stressed out about shit. But I think it's hilarious and awesome. You actually got hired because I think I'm sure a huge component of it was that you were more relaxed and you're probably actually able to communicate your value more clearly rather than trying to push and, and, and worry. And, you know, um, cause you know, that does happen. And, and it, it, I've heard of this happening too. I'll, I'll say, you know, I've some, some of my students have the experience, they have the skills, they're great, but, if you get into that mindset where you're like too desperate, it can affect you in the interview, you know, and um, I've done that in my past too. It's very human. Um, but I'm really happy it worked out. I think that vacation really, <laughs> and you, said, you mentioned that you got recommendations. So the recruiter, did they just find you randomly through a search or was it through a referral? How was that? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but on LinkedIn, I think, there's something called like an in mail. So I guess maybe they were using like a, like a paid ad um, money or PPC. You mentioned that you, you get recommendations. Did you mean that? Like you think that helped your profile or why did you mention that? I just was curious. Yeah. So I think like, obviously there's this concept of like social proof. So like, obviously when you talk about yourself and you say good things, like most people won't believe you, but if other people, especially people that have worked for you, you know, have put in like a paragraph of why this person is good, then that's like 10 times more valuable. And, and I can, I can tell because like, I think certain people that has viewed my profile, like they, they said like, oh, you know, this person said this thing about you. And I think that makes you much more valuable. It's definitely something that can help. I do want to say for the new students out there, just to be aware is that it's not essential you know, I've had many students get hit up by recruiters and get job offers with no recommendations on their LinkedIn. They're really focused on the skill set. And also, um, you know, I know you're working remotely, but, you know, you're in Cincinnati, Ohio. Again, there's not a huge pool of uh, people with your skill set um, in that area. Um, really, what I think happens, you, you had the value to offer. You know, you just kind of got out of your own way and the universe, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, you know, we, we talk about that maybe tongue in cheek, but it really happens. Like you literally, you're like, you're like, you're hustling, you're hustling, you're hustling, you're hustling, then you stop. And then, or 
just from left field, you know, like the jobs you're looking over here and then over here, this other one comes in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just, that's how it happens sometimes in life, as long as you keep focused on your goal. And what I love about it is it sounds like this is like, it's way, first of all, your first digital marketing job, you didn't really get the chance to do paid advertising that much. And then in your second digital marketing job, they're handing you millions of dollars of a multinational brand to manage. So that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's way, it's weird. Cause like we, I know I'm turning this into a little bit of a pep talk, but I think people need to hear it. We limit ourselves by our own experience and expectations. And that's why when you tell me like you, you didn't expect to get the job, I love that you like, that's very mm -hmm. honest. Cause it's like, you probably couldn't even imagine this job like two months before you got it. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get paid like really good money to work on, you know, national brands, managing millions of dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like, I, before they like told me my start date, I actually was trying to tell them if, if I could start later. Like that's how nervous I was about this job because I've never managed millions of dollars in ad spend. But now that, you know, I think this is my fifth week. I'm honestly very confident that I can handle like every single platform. Like I'm, I think I definitely know where my value is at. Um, I will, I will even add that like, so they actually hired someone that came straight out of like, uh, I think someone that was a 15 year p and -er, but he's actually has no experience in digital marketing. So like they were desperately trying to find people to fill these roles. Um, they just wanted like people that had experience like working on a team and maybe uh, previous p and uh, Procter & Gamble people. Oh, but you, you weren't a previous Procter & Gamble person. You came, you know. No. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was not. <laughs> and now how is it working there? How do you like the culture? How do you like uh, the, the team and everything that you're working with? Yeah, so I actually have not gone into the office because this is remote. So I don't know what it's like in person, but um, I think the culture is very traditional. It's very traditional, but they're bringing like this uh, new age, like, like tech flavor to it. Um, but, but yeah, like every, everyone's like really, really chill. And, uh, there's a lot of young people there, like, you know, people like in their twenties, um, and, and also old people. So it's like a mix of like the old with the new combined. And it's, it's really cool because, uh, well, I think it's really cool because everyone uses PNG, right? Cause, uh, you know, everyone uses like, uh, old spice, uh, you know, pampers, like baby wipes, when you need to wash your hands, <laughs> or like uh, Gillette to, you know, to shave. That is true. Most people, I'm trying to think if I use any of those brands, I actually don't personally. I don't use pampers or <laughs> baby wipes, but, <laughs> but most people do. And you mentioned, you mentioned you had a mentor, someone that was kind of guiding you. Yeah, so... This mentor, um, he actually comes from like data science and computer engineering. And he was the guy that managed uh, baby care previously. And uh, he's been working with me every single day, just back and forth. So like during my first like three or four weeks, he would actually just uh, get on like Microsoft team calls and kind of guide me through like a screen share of like the platforms and, you know, what you should be looking for, some like key insights. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting because it seems like uh, he's really smart, but he doesn't have the he doesn't have the digital marketing uh, know hows. So that's where I guess I, where someone like me or these other people come in. So wait, if when you said mentor, I I assumed you meant in terms of digital marketing, but you're actually providing more intelligence about digital marketing than he is. Uh. I mean, that appears to be the case because like, I guess in like some instances, like, um, you know, cause I think some instances he didn't understand like some of the basics and I guess I just had to fill them in. Wow. <laughs> at a, at a, at a giant multinational corporation. That's amazing. And so 
I'm just curious, like you said, platforms. So are you talking about Google ads, Facebook ads, Amazon shopping? You know, what, what, what platforms are you talking about? Yeah, so this is actually on retailer websites. So um, we manage on Target uh, with a platform called Credio. So Credio, you know, works with Target and they basically hold like certain spots on, you know, when you search a keyword and it's different for every keyword. Um, and then there's, uh, Kroger and then, um, Instacart. So Instacart's platform is actually like brand new. It's actually in the beta version. Um, but, but yeah, Instacart allows you to promote on like, you know, retailers that have carry your product like Kroger, uh, you know, Bye Bye Baby, Target, uh, Costco, even yeah, big clubs or Costco and Sam's club. Um, so I think Target, Instacart, uh, so we even have Walmart. So uh, Walmart actually is separated between uh, walmart.com and Walmart Grocery. And their ad platform is actually quite like inundated. It's quite like old, but um, yeah, it's, it's just like, it's definitely um, very exciting to, you know, use all these platforms at once, you know, um, so and I guess, Oh, go ahead. See the, I guess like kind of see the results of like what you do on these ads. So I like how there's two things I wanted to say, because it's really interesting. Number one, you, I like how you've mentioned a couple of times, you really like seeing results. And that is one of the most satisfying things about uh, digital marketing, especially the paid side, because it's so quick. Uh, whereas with SEO, it can take much more time. And with coding, that's what you'd like too. Um, it's really cool to see that you're making an impact. Um, and the second thing is that I wasn't aware of. So you, it sounds to me like you, but you jumped into this job with no experience in these platforms. Uh, no. Yeah, no experience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing right there. So um, it's just, it's, it's great, Boris. I'm very happy for you. I just have to tell you, you are at the beginning. You're going to make a lot more money and get a lot more job offers, especially after this one. Um, they should, you know, once, once you've been there for like six months or a year, especially with a big company like that, you should definitely get a raise, um, even though I know you're happy with what you're making. Um, but you're gonna start, if, if, when you update your LinkedIn and your resume, given the amount, of, the amount of ad spend you're managing, the brands you're managing, just like the scope, and having experience with these platforms, like you, You've done Google, you know Facebook, and now you're using you know, Credio and you're using these retail specific platforms. There is even a smaller pool of people that know how to do that stuff. And uh, I'm very happy for it. I'm excited. I mean, you're going to, I predict you will have at least a six figure offer within the next year um, should you choose to continue. Because should you choose to continue with digital <laughs> marketing and not jump back to software development? <laughs> or, yeah. Or you can do both, you know, you could do some free. Right. This is, yeah, uh, I actually kind of miss, I actually kind of miss coding. Like in my, in my like free time, I'm like actually opening like a code editor. I'm like, man, I, I want to just like write some code right now. You know, it's like, this is like fun. So that's cool, man. Maybe we can do another interview sometime about coding. Cause I like how your, your attitude towards it is really like fresh, you know, it's like, you, it's fun. It's the same attitude most people have about digital marketing um and again guys um as i'm i'm gonna plug the fact that i'm putting my book skip college for success online for free um i'm gonna make some more videos about that and the main thing i focus for, for people is just like get skills because it's like a video game life is like a video game the more skills you have the more options you have and this you know boris now has like it's gonna be a freaking kingpin in like 10 years like with his own like software <laughs> development and digital marketing firm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> doing both at the same time. Yeah. Um, or like, yeah. Or, you know, hiring people like running, you, you being the boss of people that do that. Um, exactly. Just, that's kind of, I think that's kind of why I did that too. Cause, cause I think like a lot of digital marketing people, uh, they lack the technical know-hows and a lot of technical people, they lack the, I guess maybe the soft skills or the, the consumer psychology understanding. And I always wanted to get like the hybrid, 
Like I want to get to get the best of both worlds. That's pretty rare, dude. It's very it is exciting, you know, to have both of those um, those skill sets, you know. And one of the like I will just to reiterate this for people watching it who aren't familiar with digital marketing. It's one of the reasons I like digital marketing is because you don't need to have that hardcore tech. You know, there's a little bit of tech. You need to understand basic JavaScript or not not JavaScript, but just installing code on a website. And you need to have a basic understanding, but not like what Boris was talking about. We're actually writing equations and codes and whatnot. But if you, you know, if you have um, uh, an affinity for that, you know, you can definitely do both. And I'm, I'm very excited to see that you, I'm, I'm thrilled that you didn't go into accounting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would have been like uh, the worst option and I would have not been very happy like with my life. <laughs> yeah, so it's been great talking with you. Um, I haven't really talked about your personal life. Like what's it been like in terms of this job and I don't know, your family or how's it affected your level of happiness or just in general? Yeah, I'll be honest. Like when I was unemployed, uh, there was definitely some family like drama going on and I've noticed ever since I've gotten this job like my my attitude has been much more positive and um it just seems like my like my my mental health took like a 360 turn like 180 yeah or 180 yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I'm very happy right now just gotta I'm I'm just trying to improve every day so what do your parents think or your family or your friends or girlfriend or whoever's in your life? Um, I think everyone that I've told to are like impressed and like everyone has reached out to me. Like I think on that, when I posted it on LinkedIn, a bunch of people from uh, your, your course, uh, I remember uh, if you remember uh, Karen and yeah, I think uh, there's this guy named uh, Anthony Lamb, I think, or a, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of people that I used to like uh, do the masterminds with and they've reached out to me, um, congratulating me. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for all the support and the community from this course. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I actually messaged Karen when I saw you post that. She was like, yeah, because Karen lives in Ohio as well. And we all remember you uh, when you're in the course um, hustling really hard like almost too hard <laughs> I wanted to tell you yeah. to relax <laughs> a little bit um, yeah that's that's the reminder she needs to give me yeah but it totally totally paid off man so listen uh I'm really I'm really thrilled for you thanks for sharing your story um again it's only the beginning for you do you have any last thoughts or about uh the course or digital marketing or any thoughts for the people watching uh, two thoughts. Uh, if you're thinking about taking the course, just just do it. I mean, it's cheaper than a four year degree. And, um, you know, Seth breaks this down in like simple English. And he obviously has the context and the years of experience. So he's going to guide you down a good path. I guess secondly is like Seth said, like, don't stress out too much about the COVID thing, you know, don't overwork yourself like, I, like I'm doing, you know, take a couple of days and enjoy yourself and take a vacation. And maybe, you know, maybe from a vacation, you might find something, something nice. So. <laughs> I love that. I love that attitude. I think you've inspired me to make another video about like mental health and relaxation during this time, because it's, it's a, it's a great example, man. And I've, I have other examples in my professional life and people I've known, it's the same thing. It's like they were stressed about something and they weren't, get, weren't making any headway and then they stopped and something, you know, something unexpected happened. Um, and uh, I'm really thrilled for you, man. So, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm excited to see um, how this job uh, progresses. And next time I see an ad for Old Spice or something, I'll put <laughs> <laughs> <and> my target. <laughs> <I'll see you. laughs> You have to buy their products now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody watching, you have to buy. I think I don't think Procter & Gamble needs any more business. I think they're doing pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. Okay, Boris, thanks for being here so much. And uh, we'll, we'll talk soon.
Thanks, Seth.